Hi everyone, um, this is my student participation video. So I want to start off by talking about the Collins reading, uh, which first talks about women's place in the public eye, especially legislature and government. And um, it talks about how women were limited to unseen, supportive roles behind men. Um, working women were also shunned from the mind, like the public mind in a way, and were so invisible that though they even ex though they existed, it was almost as if um, the men did it themselves. Um, and it also talks about the politics of being a woman, which I thought was super interesting. Um, women were forgotten um, in the public sector, and they often flew under the radar to avoid being scrutinized for being unprofessional for their dress and appearances. And it implies this idea of the double-edged sword of being a woman, where women are told not to dress uh, or put too much makeup on in a certain way um, in fear of looking unprofessional, incompetent, or provocative. Yet the other face of the same exact coin tells us that if we don't take care of our, our appearances and our bodies to look feminine or to look close to these what are essentially white beauty standards, we are unprofessional. And it reminds me of last week's reading from the Confidence Code where they talk about these ugly dumb bitches or dumb ugly bitches. Um, but one of the key points that they missed is um, this intersectional uh, perspective. Uh, in that these are in fact gendered beauty standards um, and or gendered uh, beauty standards that fluctuate and also are aggr aggravated by differences in class and grace. Uh, the standards held, let's say, by people of color may be vastly different from that of the white persons, but they are still forced to evade by these racialized beauty ideals. Um, the Collins reading also talks about the rise of women voting during the, the 60s and the reclaiming of their independent citizenship um, away from the men. The next reading, which was the, the Levi reading, or Levi reading um, actually brought up some memories of mine from elementary school when I watched the Ruby Bridges movie when I was in the sixth grade. And in that, I, I distinctly remember not being able to imagine a world where people were segregated by race. And I remember the horror of watching this little girl being escorted into school by federal marshals while being heckled and harassed by these angry white people in the crowd. Um, but I'd also like to admit that when I was watching this movie, I had a very narrow uh, lens that was influenced by um, the topic at hand, which was race and segregation in America. Um, this reading reveals the significant role of women in the desegregation of public schools in America. The reading brings up that men are thought of as historical subjects, but that's because they had louder voices due to their advantageous positions. Women, on the other hand, were raised to be courteous, cooperative, diplomatic future wives. Um, they understood what it was like to live in a world of harassment, insults, which were on the daily, and this made them the perfect and determined proponents of desegregation. The Ziegler reading talks about Roe v. Wade and discusses the contentious argument of abortion and the government's role and possible right to intervene in the private lives of citizens. The U.S., beyond its role in regulating policy and its economic activities, had also historically tried to intervene and control the purview of citizens' privacy and constitutional issues. Uh, Roe v. Wade was a landmark decision in pushing the government away from having absolute control over its subjects and helped to reclaim the corporeal being, which I think is... I mean, it still is a historical landmark decision years later. Um, the Macintosh reading talks about the obliviousness and ignorance of white and male privilege in efforts to maintain this image of meritocracy, democratic choice, and the American dream. Um, men equate their privilege and oblique power to their born gender, but or not to their born gender, but to their earned merits and accomplishments and skills. 
Um, this reminded me a little bit about the HBR study that I did in which um, men inflated their actual leadership skills, um, which in part is definitely due to this to their being raised to think that they are much better than they are. Um, and this reading also talks about men neglecting to acknowledge their inherent advantage to give people this false feeling of equity in order to sustain and prop up their power in the public eye. Um, the, the last reading, the Salam or Salem reading, touches upon the relationship between queer women and the American suffrage movement. Uh, I found it interesting that the author points out how suffragists are often depicted as these chaste, polite, tightly corseted women. Um, and she goes on to emphasize that upon closer examination, suffragists weren't as homogenous as taught in classrooms. Um, in fact, suffragists were of differing races and sexual orientation. She talks about this um, smokescreen, which was used by detractors to erase and sanitize the, in fact, varied women of this movement to make it palatable to mainstream people. Uh, suffragists who were white, wealthy, married, and mothers were used as the poster, the poster children of this movement. We see this in um, previous readings where Stanton and Anthony uh, purposely erase the dialogues of black women so as not to distract people from voting for women's suffrage.